to Mali now, where the military has announced that both the interim president, Ban Dao, and the prime minister, Mokta Uwan, have been removed from their positions. The two men have been held at a military camp outside the capital, Bamako, since they were arrested on Monday evening. And it is Colonel Asimi Goita, the deputy leader in the transitional government, who has accused them of failing in their duties and seeking to sabotage the country's transition. Correspondents say we can now safely assume that another coup has taken place in Mali, the second in nine months. Well, let's get more on this from uh, Arise International Correspondent Faith Or Good to see you, Faith. Uh, the military announcing now that both the president and the prime minister have been removed from their positions. So it is a coup. It certainly sounds like it is. I mean, you don't lock up the president and the prime minister and really call it in anything else. Originally, they were being slightly more reserved in their words. They were saying that they had been detained, that they hadn't been arrested, that talks were taking place. But they have taken the president, the prime minister and the defence minister to the military base of Kati, which is about 15 kilometres outside the capital Bamako. Mm. Now, that base actually has a bit of a history here when it comes to coups in Mali. Um, they, in August, when President Keita was removed from power, they took him there to force his resignation. And then in 2012 as well, when Touré was deposed, that was where he went. So, yes, another coup, as you said, the second in the space of nine months, the country is really no stranger to this. Mm. The president and the prime minister had only been sworn in as part of this interim government in September. So that is how quickly these things are moving. Um, we do know that the prime minister managed to speak to the AFP news agency yesterday on the phone and he managed to tell them that the soldiers had taken him but then the line was cut off. Wow. And, and this latest crisis has come about because some military men were not on the list of the new government following a reshuffle. Do you think the president and the prime minister were aware that this reshuffle would so anger the military that they would carry out another coup? It certainly seems to have been a miscalculation on his part. I mean, he's a former soldier himself. Mm, absolutely. And the detentions here took place just hours after this reshuffle was announced. Now, in this new reshuffle, there was 25 cabinet members, including four soldiers and four women. But what has happened and what has angered the military so much is that two key individuals who were involved in August's coup have been removed from their positions. Mm. Now, they were um, Sadio Kamara and Colonel Modibo Kone. Now, they had the defence and the security portfolios, respectively, but they were replaced on Monday. We haven't heard any reason for their replacement. We do know that the military retained other really important portfolios that they mm. were keen to keep a hold of. Um, but when the cabinet was originally appointed following the coup in 2020, the vice president, Tassimi Goita, um, was placed, he was named vice president. He has now taken over. So we do know that. Right. And, and of course, the previous coup came after a great deal of public demonstrations. Uh, people took to the streets. They wanted a change of government. They got it. Now they're having another change of government. What sense do you get of what popular reaction is likely to be? The streets of Bamako are quite calm at the moment. We're not seeing things really moving in either direction. When Keita was removed in August, there was some celebration. His removal was welcomed by quite a number mm. of Malians. In 2012, when Toure was removed, there was widespread celebration. We're not going to see that this time. There is a feeling among the civilians there, A, first, of who's in charge, what's happening now, and B, that actually this is a step backwards because there are some indications that the president was looking to make a bit of a move to move things forward to mm. move towards democracy in which case the military would have less power in other words move more quickly towards yes. democracy right and indeed hold those elections next right. year which it's unlikely that that is going to happen now although the people who have taken over have said it will still happen chances are looking slim for that but civilians want that. There, there has been a lot of frustration lately with the speed of progress. Mm. 
And it looks like that is why this has happened, because the president made a move to do what the civilians wanted, and the military just didn't like it. Right. And, and of course, there's been widespread international condemnation of this coup attempt, or we might as well just call it a coup now, from the UN, ECOWAS, the AU, the EU, and the US. Tell us more about what they've been saying about this and what's being done about it. So just about every international organization that you can think of has condemned this, is calling for the immediate and unconditional release of everyone in detention. Um, the United Nations African Union have issued a joint statement and that says that the international community rejects in advance any act of coercion, including forced resignations. We have heard from the European Council President, Charles Michel, now we actually heard from him just a few hours following these arrests yesterday, and he says that the EU is referring to this as a kidnapping and that they are looking at measures. He has declined to elaborate on mm. what those measures might be. Um, the joint statement from the, from the US and uh, sorry, the US, the UK, France, Germany and ECOWAS has also joined in that joint statement. Today we are seeing a delegation from ECOWAS actually visiting Bamako to try and do some mediation here to see what can be done to stop this spiralling out of control. Overall, the message from the international community is very much return to the transition back towards democracy. That's what they're interested in. And of course the international community are obviously concerned about the situation in the Sahel and given all the um, insecurity around there. I mean, how much is all this likely to deepen the political chaos in Mali just months after uh, a previous military coup removed the, 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 the previous president? Could it exacerbate instability in a country that is in the throes of a violent insurgency? I mean, frankly, Ma Mali has been in absolute turmoil for years. When Toure was removed in 2012, that mm. left a vacuum that Al-Qaeda stepped into and took advantage of. They took over towns, they took over huge areas. And in the end, France actually had to step in. The French military mm. had to step in and fight them, take them out of those towns, recapture the areas. And they did that successfully. But the violence has never, ever gone away. It's never reduced back to what it was. Because we are still seeing Al-Qaeda carrying out attacks on the army, on civilians, on the police. They're launching attacks throughout the Sahel region in neighbouring countries. I mean, it's a real worry for the people here. We saw a surge during Ramadan. Mm. And without a cohesive government to develop a strategy to stop them, they're going to continue. I mean, who's going to fight Al-Qaeda when the military is busy arresting the president? But it's not just insecurity that's the issue. We've seen the biggest trade union organised strikes in the past few Absolutely. weeks. Wages haven't been paid for civil servants. Um, the economy has suffered hugely because of this pandemic. So all in all, it's a, it's a testing time for Mali, for Malians. And of course, it's also going to be a testing time for Mali's neighbours. I mean, people you know, across the, the rest of West Africa and so on. Um, Faith, thank you very much indeed. A very worrying development in, in Mali there. Um, hopefully this will all be sorted out. Faith Orr, our correspondent, talking to me there about what clearly is now a military coup in Mali. Thank you.